Concerning um, the current situation, um, there has not been much change at the Fukushima Daiichi plant over the last 24 hours. Some positive trends are continuing, but there remain areas of uncertainty that are of serious concern. Unit 1 is with off-site AC power to the lighting of its central control room and to some of its instrumentation. Unit 3 now also has lighting to its central control room, but not power to its instrumentation. It remains too early to evaluate how much instrumentation may effectively be recovered at units 1, 2, 3 and 4. Reactor pressure is decreasing at unit 1, and so is seawater injection. On the other hand, pressure readings in the reactor... Sorry. On the other hand, pressure readings in the reactor pressure vessels remain unreliable in Unit 2 and have become unreliable in Unit 3. The, the temperature of the feedwater nozzle of the reactor pressure vessel continues to decrease um, to 205 degrees centigrade at Unit 1 and 42.8 degrees centigrade at Unit 3. It remains stable at unit two at 105 degrees centigrade. The dose rates in the containment vessel and suppression chamber have continued to decrease um, at unit one and have remained stable at unit two. At unit three, radiation exposure of three TEPCO subcontracting workers has been confirmed. They were working in the basement with contaminated water on the floor. Two of them were transferred to hospital with severe contamination of their feet. There are no significant developments to report at Unit 4, where water spraying continues. Units 5 and 6 remain in comparatively good condition. Temperatures at both, which had risen when the cooling pumps were briefly shut down in order to switch off off-site power, uh, have since been restored to lower levels. And both units are still in cold shutdown. For the same reasons, a brief rise in temperature also occurred at the common spent fuel pool on the 24th of March. On-site radiation monitoring at the Daiichi nuclear power plant indicates that dose rates continue to decrease. Deposition of radioactivity is monitored daily by Japanese authorities in all 47 prefectures. And from the 23rd of March to the 24th of March, additional deposition has been detected in seven of the 47 prefectures. Considerable variations are observed the deposition at this day range from 42 to 16,000 becquerels per square metre for iodine, 131. The highest value determined for cesium was 210 becquerels per square metre. For the Shinjuku district of Tokyo, the deposition of iodine, 131, on this day increased by 13,000 becquerels per square metre and the cesium, 137 deposition by 160 becquerels per square metre. As far as the marine environment is concerned, sampling of air and seawater continues to be carried out by the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology, MEXT. Results are sent to the IAEA Monaco Laboratory for assessment. Measurements in the marine environment have been carried out 30 kilometres offshore and 330 metres from the discharge points on the 23rd of March and repeated the next day. The results made available up to the 25th of March indicate concentrations of iodine 131, some 80 becquerels per litre, and cesium 137, about 26 becquerels per litre. This contamination is most likely to be due to atmospheric fallout rather than just ocean currents. <coughs> Dilution in the ocean is expected to decrease rapidly this initial surface contamination. Cesium-137 will be more important over the long term owing, owing to its half-life of 30 years compared to that of iodine-131, a half-life of eight days. 
Modeling of the dis dispersion of these radionuclides has been started and the first results are becoming available. Marine dispersion will of course be much slower than atmospheric transport. Since yesterday, additional data has been made available by the Japanese authorities concerning radionuclide concentrations in milk, vegetables and drinking water. Levels of iodine-131 exceeded levels recommended by the Japanese authorities in five raw milk samples taken in Fukushima Prefecture and exceeded levels of iodine-131 and cesium-137 in one vegetable, Mizuna, sampled in Ibaraki Prefecture. Monitoring of drinking water is ongoing. ID-131 in drinking water was detected in 13 prefectures. Cesium-137 was detected in six of the 47 prefectures. During the period of 19 to 23rd of March, all results remain below the limits set by the Japanese government. However, permissible levels of ID-131 were exceeded in drinking water samples taken in the Fukushima and Ibaraki prefectures and in Tokyo from the 17th to the 23rd of March. More positively, the ID-131 levels in drinking water for Tokyo are now below the limit set for consumption for infants recommended by the Japanese authorities and restrictions have been lifted. As a result of food monitoring where contamination exceeded the levels recommended by the Japanese authorities, current restrictions on the distribution of milk are in place in two prefectures, Fukushima and Ibaraki, and on the distribution of certain vegetables in four prefectures, Fukushima, Ibaraki, Tachigi and Gunma. This regulatory approach is to prevent food contaminated with radioactivity above these limits entering the market and thereby ensure the safety of foods. On the 23rd of March, the Japanese authorities requested sampling of agricultural products in six neighboring prefectures, Miyagi, Yamagata, Saitama, Chiba, Niigata and Nagano. This request for further food monitoring covers the same types of foods currently under restriction. A joint FAO-IAEA food safety mission is, is currently on its way to Japan. On the 25th of March, the IAEA radiation monitoring team made additional measurements at distances from 34 to, to 62 kilometers from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. At these locations, the dose rate ranged from 0 0.73 to 8.8 .8 microsieverts per hour. At the same location, results of beta-gamma contamination measurements range from 0 0.07 to 0 0.96 megabecquerels per square metre. Uh, Director General Amano had a video conference today with a UN Secretary General and the heads of a number of other UN system organisations concerning the accident. In addition, close coordination led by the IAEA through the Joint Radiation Emergency Plan Management Plan of International Organizations, JPLAN, continues.